Hello, everybody. I think we can get going. And when people are still joining, that's just uh, nice, but let's let's kick off today's webinar. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this important webinar on psychological first aid in the workplace. We'll um, go through a, a specific guide for leaders today. And I am Dr. Katharina Koch. I'm the head of psychology at Nilo, and I'm insured uh, of our quality insurance here. I'm also a clinical psychologist myself, and I've worked many years with patients in a clinical context. I'm also a researcher. I'm doing uh, the research here at Nilo. For those who know, we are collecting um, scientific research here as well. But I also did a lot of research in the past on um, on psychological problems, specifically mood disorders. So worked with patients here as well. And I hold a PhD in neuroscience and psychology. Today, we are going to talk about psychological first aid, a super relevant topic. I think a topic that is more and more important in our world and also crosses the workplace. And we want to look into um, the following steps. Let me see if I can get this to work. Yes. So this is our agenda for today. We are going to look at what is psychological aid at all. We'll place it in the context of workplace. What is the relevance here? Why do we need to talk about this? And we'll look at leadership specifically. We'll make this very hands-on. So I will give you very uh, straightforward um, information on how to detect mental health challenges in the workplace and also what interventions fit leadership and the context of the workplace. In the end, we will have time for Q&A. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, I want to invite you to just use the chat or the Q&A. Um, the difference is the Q&A box is anonymous, or at least it is possibly anonymous if you want that to be. Um, but I will address both. I will address all the questions at the end. Um, if there's anything that we can't address today or you want to reach out about directly to Nilo, to me, I'm happy to answer your questions also in a follow-up. So let's dive in. Psychological first aid, um, what does that actually mean? Um, we understand <clears throat> psychological first aid as support of employees who are in psychological crisis or encounter substantial stressor or multiple uh, substantial stressors in the mental health area with the goal of enhancing their emotional well-being and to help them <clears throat> cope with the psychological impact of this kind of event. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Yeah. Now, why do we need to talk about this in the uh, context of organizations? It is very important to um, understand that mental health um, has become a very uh, important factor in our society. Over the past years, we have observed that anxiety and depression have been very common in our society. And this is, of course, also true for the workplace. And this is a sample uh, yeah, of over 4,000 individuals. And the numbers speak for themselves, I think. Um, what was found here is that 60% of individuals actually experience at least mild symptoms of anxiety. 56% of individuals experience at least mild symptoms of depression, and 76% of individuals experience moderate to high levels of stress. And I don't think this is just related to work stress or the stress of you know, dropping off uh, your kids and running to work or all of that. It is related to multiple things, right? It's related to expectations from yourself, from your employer, but also to world events that we have to face right now and somehow cope with. It is related to um, all kinds of factors that we, um, that we face in our world today. And why is this important? It is very relevant to understand that if the numbers are this high, chances that some members of your teams are dealing with any psychological distress or challenge, are very high. And 
I brought you a few more numbers. I, I just can't avoid that. I'm a researcher, like I told you, so I, I like the numbers. But I also think it's very important to look at those. In Germany, um, about a third of the adult population is affected by a mental illness every year. And up to 60% of employees worldwide have experienced at least one mental health challenge at some point in their lives. And one in five employees in Germany has actually been diagnosed with depression at least once. That's only depression. So the numbers are very high when it comes to mental illness. And this is more complex because a lot of people keep this to themselves. Um, not many people reach out to service providers, even if they are diagnosed with mental illness. And a very high number, 67% of people with mental health problems don't go to their employer and talk about it because of a big stigma that is still around because of a worry about the reaction, not just, um, you know, maybe the career could be impacted by that, but also worry that maybe they would be um, uh, handled in a different way, or there would be a negative reaction from colleagues, or, you know, it may, might, might make the word and come out. And so a lot of people um, still feel like they have to deal with uh, mental challenges, mental health challenges themselves and do it alone. And I think that is something that we um, see in our society generally a lot, that we have this um, this different expectation how to handle mental health challenges. Like if I break my leg and it has to go in a cast, I'm okay to put my leg up and rest for the time that it needs to heal. But if I deal with a mood disorder, I often feel more like, that's at least what we see, um, I have to, have to somehow push and put it together and still just, um, you know, do my work, um, take care of my responsibilities and just push through it. So there is a big difference in how we handle physical versus uh, mental health challenges. And this last point is very important, I think, too, because it, it just um, stresses how, how big that stigma still can be and how high that expectation to handle everything yourself is still um, present in people because only one in seven people actually reaches out proactively to their relatives even for support. So we can say overall that mental health challenges, mental illness is quite common. Um, it's very difficult for people to talk about it or to share it because of a fear of um, the reaction could be negative. And um, again, why do we need to care about this in the workplace? Well, mental health challenges are very expensive for organizations. I don't know who of you has had a team member or maybe also secondhand experience of for example, a, a longer dropout of somebody in their in their um, in their team, their response, of course, is is not always positive, right? Because now what? The rest of the team has to cover for this person. That means um, different expectations to everybody else, different levels of stress, different le levels of pressure. It's um, it's a challenge when someone drops out for a longer time, but also um, generally mental health challenges can cause reduced productivity. And again, I'd like to draw that parallel with physical health. If I, if I have a cold, I can't focus as well as in when I'm super fit, right? But that cold is gonna blow over. When I have a mental health challenge, I also can't focus the same way. But the difference is it's not gonna blow over. Most likely mental health challenges stick around if not treated, if not attended. They tend to get worse over time. And so the productivity gets worse and it is not just gonna go away by itself. Another, um, another uh, um, cause of, um, of mental health challenges is uh, presenteeism. That's when we show up at work while we're not fit. So the same thing with the cold, right? We do that a lot. We just go to work even though we don't feel 100%, but we won't be as productive the same way. We won't perform the same way. That's what we call presenteeism. And we see that a lot with mental health challenges because you can also hide them very well. And you have, again, these different expectations 
to still just push through and perform. But performance is reduced. Um, also increased sick leave absenteeism is a very big one. And I saw that a new health um, care report coming out shows that even in 2023, the numbers um, of sick leave have again gone up. And now the reasons are more and more related to mental health challenges. But physical reasons are going down, mental health reasons go up. And all this is uh, gonna lead to a lower job satisfaction because I don't wanna underperform, right? I don't wanna be the one that is uh, having a ton of sick days or um, isn't productive at work. So I'm gonna have a less job satisfaction and that might increase also my turnover intentions and turnover rates are very expensive like everybody knows and is difficult for teams. One more number and then I, I promise I'll stop, but Workers in Germany who report mental or emotional distress overall miss 35.4 million more days of work each year than their counterparts who have not been mentally or emotionally distressed. So the numbers speak for themselves. It is very important for this reason that we understand that mental health challenges are very common. They affect our um, performance. They affect our, um, our, our um, satisfaction and um, they affect our teams. And this is why we need to look at that in organizations. And we wanna to talk today about responsibilities of leads here, because you have a lot of um, opportunity to support your team members. And um, I think it's always very important not to just look at what can you do, but also where does it end, right? So responsibilities of leaders are to create a positive work environment, to be attentive to warning signs of mental health issues and to educate yourselves about that, and to be empathic and supportive towards your team. I think importantly, there can't be too much pressure on these as well, right? You're not expected to be an expert. You're not expected to be a psychologist and have all the answers and spend all your time on this topic as well. But there are things that you can do and that would make a huge difference in the lives of your, of your team members and in the performance of your teams and your organizations. So let's look at early warning signs. How can you spot mental health challenges in others? And I brought you a list because you can actually um, very straightforward look for specific things in team members that might indicate a mental health challenge. Important is to never assume this is a disorder or this is you know, a psychological problem because it might also indicate something else is up. But all of these things that we'll talk about now are indications that there's something going on in, um, in an individual and that occupies them enough to, um, to make a visible change uh, in their behavior. Very important is to um, look for sudden changes in behavior. Whatever it is, if that's been always the case, you know, somebody is, I don't know, always um, missing lunches or events, then that might not be something to look out for. But if there is a very sudden change in a specific behavior, I would get attentive, I would get um, alarmed. So a big one is reduced performance, of course. If you're used to certain performance in your team member and all of a sudden you're noticing this has changed a lot, I would be alarmed. Also difficulties concentrating is a very common symptom of many psychological problems. A higher error or accident rate is a very common indicator. Increased absence, like we just talked about, leave, right? The sick leave, um, that's uh, an important one, but also showing up late, for example. Um, changes in behavior with others is a very important one. A lot of times people become more edgy, so they, they get very irritable. And social withdrawal, so no more participation in events, um, like the lunches I just mentioned, or um, also other things, while that always was a thing that somebody would be part of, could be an indication that um, there's something going on. And maybe one level up is a neglect of personal hygiene or clothing. So the typical thing we, we see, um, just a, a neglect of, um, you know, you don't care anymore. So um, unbrushed hair or 
no shower or sweatpants and, and all of a sudden again, right? So a change here could be an indication. It's very important, like I said earlier, not to assume that all of these things or some of these things, um, when you see them indicate a specific disease or um, a problem, but what is very good to do next is uh, to address this. And we'll talk about this right now. So what is the bidding intervention for you in the role of lead and uh, for the work context as well? Generally, people that have a psychological problem and deal with an issue that is that is present for them and that they haven't shared yet will most likely be happy if you address it. Most likely they will be relieved if it is talked about. So I would always assume that somebody wants to share this. However, it is very important how to approach them, right? So it's important not to just walk towards someone and, um, and, and just tell them, I think you have a problem, of course. What we wanna make sure is you have a safe space that you create. So you're not gonna talk to someone in the hallway or by the way, you know, this kind of conversation, you will uh, best prepare this with um, a meeting that is also open-ended. Um, I would, I mean, I would end it, but I would not book a meeting right after so you don't have to run out of it. I would make sure that you cannot be watched or overheard by others. So create a safe space and then ask very openly, share your observation. The last few weeks, I've just noticed this happened. I'm concerned, so ex express your concern and I wanna help express your support. And then very importantly, let people talk. So listen and don't intervene with any advice right away or I've seen this before or my cousin had this. So no, just let them talk for a while facilitate the conversation, maintain eye contact that helps people to keep talking and try to be very non-judgmental here. So show understanding and then you go into the support, right? So you wanna make sure somebody understands you're here to help. You're here to find a way forward together. Importantly, a team member will not assume that work performance isn't still a very important um, part of the conversation, right? So it is okay to address that and to say, what can we do to um, to get you back uh, into the performance that, that we know from you? What can we do to support you? Is it, for example, possible to, you know, make some adjustment in your, in your, um, in your responsibilities right now in the task that you're facing right now? And there are many things you could address, but I would always ask, the individual to um, to share what they what they would like and what would help them best, and again show concern to make sure they understand. If you're already working with Nilo, um, this is of course where we come in, right? So you um, will directly um, bring up Nilo as a as a resource um, to support here. And again, it might be that somebody doesn't struggle with a mental health uh, issue. And you brought it up in a very good way. So there is no, there is no loss. There's only a gain of you and them having a good report. Let's look at what else can help a psychological first aid. Um, very important is it helps if you get a little informed. If somebody tells you they have um, recurring depression, for example, and right now they're in a in a phase of um, a new episode of depression, then maybe you want to Google depression really quick to understand what that looks like. However, it is important that this individual who is sitting next to you is the expert of their own problems and of their experiences. So I would always ask them and try and be empathic, try and ex give them time to explain what, what works for them, what not, because a danger is that you assume that um, certain symptoms are always the same for everybody, which is not true with psychological diseases. Um, 
they manifest often very differently. So it's important to just listen and, and be empathic there. Then you can try and balance independence and support. It's nice to give a person as much independence as possible here. And of course, you make sure that they understand you're here for them. With uh, psychological um, challenges, it's always important to count baby steps. So um, make sure you help them to, to, to go in small steps and not to um, overburden themselves because that leads often to disappointment and um, will um, not motivate them and not help them in their progress. But baby steps often lead to wins and rewards. And so that's, that's a better way to go ahead. That's what we do in psychology. Very important for you, be patient because um, it's normal that, um, that stabilization and improvement when it comes to mental health issues takes time. So um, it is normal that even if it goes up and it, it's improving, it, there might be setbacks and that is normal, that is expected, that is also hard for the individual and of course for your team, for, for everybody else, it is normal though. So just try and remember that. And um, what I always think is a very nice one, it's, it's sweet, uh, try and spend time together with your team. So ask them what kind of um, event would be okay for them because maybe a, a noisy pub isn't the right environment right now, but a walk um, with a picnic would be better. So I think that's a, that's a nice and sweet idea. And then I'm thinking um, creating clarity is, is very important. So make sure they understand we have recurring meetings where we check in on how you're doing, what you need, where I can support. And that's also helpful for someone else uh, if they know we see each other every, I don't know, second or third Thursday and talk about, um, do a little check-in. The takeaway of today is there is so much you can do as leads to be meaningful and to be supportive of uh, your team members. While it doesn't need to take all of your time, right? And it doesn't need you to do a whole education on, on psychology, but with a few steps, being open-minded, being attentive and being supportive, you can change their world and you can change your teams. And in the end, we're, we're um, of course striving towards a thriving team, a high-performing team. And this is, um, this is uh, possible with your support. I wanna remind you to just stay open because everybody is different. Man mental health challenges manifest differently in everybody. So um, if you're noticing anything, a change in, in, in behavior, just address it and stay open to, to their point of view and to their individual wishes and needs. Very important, and I wanna stress this, don't wait, talk to the person as early as possible. Not if you see something once, right? But if you see something a week or two, I would address it because we know from research, but also from clinical experience, early interventions are so powerful. So the earlier you go into something and you address it, again, for example, with us, right? And you, you just make sure somebody is immediately helped, um, the sooner uh, they will come out of it and the easier because what I mentioned earlier, if you wait um, a lot of time, but also little time with psychological issues, they tend to manifest into real disorders and to long-term problems. And if you manage to, um, to bring something up early and get into the support um, early, the, um, the interventions are, are gonna be very powerful and much, much quicker. And lastly, something we should never forget is to take care of yourself. Sometimes, um, or a lot of times, being attentive and offering support is, is a lot. And it's okay to also be mindful and check in with yourself to see, how am I doing with this? If you listen to somebody else's problems, sometimes they become your problems just emotionally, even though they aren't, but you might take them home or they might keep you busy you might worry about your team and um, all of these things are legit. So take that serious and take yourself serious and take enough time for your own and personal self-care. Um, that's it from my side. <laughs> I rushed through this. 
But I also see a few questions here already. So I'm excited to see what uh, your questions are. And um, please keep sharing them in the chat or the Q&A. And I'll start to answer them one by one. Let's see. Yeah, the first question is, how do you ask someone what's up with them? Like when somebody misses every two weeks on Thursday because they feel sick, what should one do? How do we tackle this? And who should do it, the team lead or the PNC? I think, um, thank you very much for your question. Uh, I, I try to address that. So I think I would definitely um, invite someone to a conversation. Maybe you can start as a team lead if you're not comfortable with that. I, I think. Um, you could also bring this to uh, people, but I would, I would probably start that as a team lead and just say, look, I'm just, I'm just worried. I'm, I'm seeing this behavior, and I want to see if there's something going on that you want some support with, and I'm here. And um, again, I would really make sure that you create a, a safe space for this conversation, and that you stress. Um, why you bring it up, so the observation and the goal that you want to find a good way to get out of this and that you're here to support. The next question is, I'm asking myself how to best tackle mental health issues with a workforce that mostly consists of men in production and in the engineering field where dysfunctional masculine behavior is observed very often, what would be your advice to approach that challenge? I hope I understand this correctly, but I'm guessing that you're still talking about individual mental health issues, or do you mean mental health as a topic in general? If it's the first, so individual mental health issues, I would not make a difference. I've treated a lot of men in the past and um, I, I would say strongly that there are differences in terms of how symptoms manifest, but also there are the same problems. There are the same questions. There are the same, um, there's the same need for support. And I think if you go individually, so one by one and you invite someone um, individually into that safe space to talk about it and to also bring up resources, right? Where can they go with this problem? Um, again, this is where we would come in, right? Where we are um, the ideal uh, partner for, for any question here because you can just directly um, get the right support with the right partner. But also outside, I mean, you can, of course, refer to other resources like um, like mental health institutions. I don't think there is a difference. I, I could see that there is maybe a difference in addressing mental health as a concept overall. So generally with a big group, I still would, um, I would advocate to uh, start a conversation. So um, promote uh, mental health as something normal as something that everybody has. Go baby steps here again. So um, start with just uh, bringing this up. Um, um, for example, by introducing, I don't know, a stress course. That's something that a lot of people can relate to. And then um, maybe you go from there. But I, I think that there should not be a difference ex in my experience there. Um, there isn't, it's just, it, it shows differently sometimes. Um, another question, thanks for the data and insights. Wanted to know if you have any data or statistics, how mental health affects within the tech industry. I don't have specific numbers for the tech industry, but I don't think that there are differences. We work with a lot of tech companies and they have a lot of, um, yeah, they're very happy with us. So I, I don't think there is a big difference. Um, you probably refer to um, if there is just the, the same demand. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't know of anything that would show that there is a different uh, demand within that industry. 
How can you build, maintain, improve a working environment which makes your employees more comfortable to talk about mental health issues? Specifically in a work environment that is based on a lot of remote work. Oh, that's that's very good. Um, again, I think important is to start small and just introduce that um, the communication about it. So. Um, I, I really like the low threshold approach in the beginning. So start with um, maybe a workshop, maybe just, you know, a mental health week where you um, promote some information about it. Very general, very low threshold, very easy, accessible, and then um, and then build up from there. It is going to make people more comfortable to talk about it when you are comfortable to talk about it. That's always a very big one to remember. As, um, your role model as lead and if you bring it up with um, you know the normal see it as um, that will make it easier for people to jump on that train and do the same um, yeah and then step by step build up yes we can share the presentation I think I struggle to convince leaders that this is a workplace issue. Many colleagues see it as a delicate personal matter, but nothing to do with work. What are some root causes or systemic changes that can be made? And what are arguments, uh, what arguments can be used to convince more traditional mindsets around this? There's, um, this is a very common thing that we see a lot actually. And um, we have uh, lots of materials on our website, by the way, if you are interested, check out our blog. We have a lot of resources that might be very useful for you uh, for different areas here. But um, I understand that people don't want to touch this because it's been so delicate in the past and it's been such a uh, um, difficult thing to talk about, but but we are seeing this change and now people talk about it more, people are open more and more about it. And it's already been seeing a dramatic change over the past 10 years, I would say. And I think this will continue. Um, it can't be about convincing, right? It has, it has to be about education. So I would come um, with numbers because I think those speak for themselves. And if you need support here, please reach out to us because we have all the numbers. There is a lot of evidence out there that um, mental health is uh, a matter that needs to be addressed in the workplace um, with the interest of the organization, right? Like we want thriving teams that high perform, perform highly, then this is something we need to take into account and take serious. But yeah, don't feel... Uh, hesitant and reach out to us because we do have um, lots of uh, information and materials there. I'm going to check the Q&As. Um, will we get the recording? <laughs> I, I don't know. I will ask um, marketing later, but I think for sure you can get the slides. As a manager, how can we practice self-care after supporting our team members? Is there a toolkit we can use? Yes. Also, again, please check out our blog. Um, self-care is so important. I have a lot of webinars on self-care because I'm a big, I'm a big advocate here <laughs> that we need to really, really, really take that serious. And um, we have some, some of those webinars are on the site as well. It is um it is so relevant to take yourself serious here and uh, um I think the most basic things is uh the most basic basic things are to to uh, start taking your um your needs very serious so listen to yourself check in with yourself and make sure you um you do the basic stuff so eat and drink well take breaks sleep enough and work out if you can, take walks, interact with other people. Those are the things that you have to do on a daily basis um, to, to keep a healthy balance. And then of course, there's many, many more um, things that are relevant, but um, yeah, you'll find more information on our site. I was wondering what would be a good way to show empathy in these stressful situations? 
I am not sure what you mean with the stressful situations. Um, you know, em empathy just is, uh, it's enough if you just check in with your, um, with, with that individual, right? If you just level with them for a second, that's simply the words I hear you are, are very meaningful, are very important and making the time sit down with them if it's possible. That is that is already huge. And in psychotherapy, we um we often start a relationship by um by just validating the emotion that somebody else is going through. And that means you you just um um acknowledge that this is art or this isn't an easy thing to talk about or this is a big step to open up here and that's that's already massive so even if there's a stressful situation i think um little things like that would make a big difference and if possible take your time for it How do you go about someone who doesn't want support, especially through a team leader? Wouldn't the individual feel embarrassed? So of course, there's always gonna be um, dynamics that uh, we in this webinar cannot address in teams. Um, I think it all starts with the team lead, right? To, um, to learn more about themselves and to learn more skills. Um, in this regard of mental health support and awareness around mental health and then start the communication with the team. Again, team leads are very powerful as role models. So if you um, if you share that you wanna communicate about this, you make it easier for other people to do that. And um, if it's not the right situation, then I wouldn't force it, of course. So I. I would say if you expect that somebody would be embarrassed, um, I would, I would not force a conversation like that, and I would probably um, just sit down and and be very open and say, look, I I'm noticing a certain behavior, I'm worried about it. Is there something you want to talk about? The individual has the freedom to say no, <laughs> so you're not gonna push them into. Um, into sharing something they don't feel comfortable sharing. If you manage to become the lead to open up to, that's of course the dream, right? That's the goal. Very nice to see you too, Victoria. Very happy you joined. I'm going back to the chat because we have some more questions here. Sorry, I'm just reading through the questions. So we're already sharing some resources that might be helpful. I hope you guys are seeing the chat because there are some answers to the recording. I, of course, it's gonna be on the website and then the blog um, material that might be helpful. Uh, I observe that you are discussing the mental health of employees in this case with regard to productivity. What happens if the leader is partly or completely responsible for mental suffering in the workplace? In other words, what do you recommend if the leader is the toxic one? That's a tough question. <laughs> I just address the dynamics, right? Like it, it's obviously the goal that leads are, um, are not toxic and are able to talk about mental health and are able to, um, to share um, important information, but be supportive. If this isn't given in a team, if you're not feeling comfortable to talk to your lead, I would always um, recommend to, to go to, the, to, your, to your people person to talk about your um, your uh, situation and make sure that you have a person to talk to there. You cannot change a person. I cannot change a person. I um, also as a psychotherapist, we we can't uh, force anything on anyone. 
people need to want to be the people um, that, uh, that they want to be and that their goal is to be. Um, so yeah, there is not a recipe for um, for a toxic leadership here. Um, and I think it's important to always look out for what, what can I do to live in a situation like that, to work in a situation like that? What are my strengths and um, how can I uh, deal with certain, you know, personality traits or behavioral traits? And um, we work with a lot of coaches that would help in that way, that would help in a situation like that to just help you to cope. And um, that is a good strategy. Also, maybe important to know that leadership training is super important and becomes more and more relevant and something we also are really uh, pushing to help um, to help leaders to um, to become better in their in their role and also more uh, sure about themselves because it's not always easy to address these things and to um, to know which steps are the right ones and what should I do how do I approach someone so it's it's good to do little training there as well okay i think we covered all the questions we have email addresses and um, lots of links here in the in the chat if anybody wants to reach out to us directly, please feel free. And I'm very happy uh, that you all were here today. Thanks for your time and um, yeah, have a lovely rest of your day.